Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture uh, 75. So, in the last lecture, we have uh, discussed little bit about the time. Uh, today, we are going to uh, discuss about the RV determination in this lecture. Okay, so, let us uh, first state what is the RV determination. So, as already we have learned that given x, y, z, x dot, y dot, z dot, find out a e i small omega capital omega and theta so you are trying to find the orbital parameters from the cartesian coordinates now here in this case this x y z it's not directly measurable Okay. What do we measure from the earth? Okay, this is our x, y, z the inertial frame. So, somewhere on the ground, somebody is sitting and making this observation. So, he is making, he is doing the observation part. So, what he is doing? That he is trying to Z T P. Let us first describe the axis, the reference frame. Y T P or X. This is X T P, topocentric, and this is Y T P. So Y T P points toward the north, and X T P points toward the east, and Z T P vertically radially outward. So in this, the observation is made, and the satellite is located here. So, as a whole what we can do that I can measure the range, okay, range rate rho dot azimuth and elevation. These are the four things can be measured at most. There is no way x, y, z and x dot, y dot, z dot can be measured. That is the in the inertial frame can we have directly this Cartesian coordinates x y g and x dot y dot z dot. No, it is not possible. So, therefore, to get this we measure this and then try to estimate this one. And as you know from your basic uh, mathematics that if you have x plus y equal to say 5. Okay. So, there are two unknowns and uh, only one equation in involved. So, here in this case you can have infinite number of solutions. This represents basically a line. So, if, uh, here you have any line in this place. Okay, so, the, there are many points which will be satisfying the equation of this line. So, this kind of problem we call as the indeterminate, indeterminate problem. So, you cannot work it out it has infinite number of solutions. So, so, similarly here in this place they are connected by certain equation let us call this as the mapping f which maps from your observation to the Cartesian coordinates from observed values to the Cartesian uh, coordinate values. But this mapping is available to us okay, and that is available in terms of equations. But as you can see that here in this case we have one equation and two unknowns we cannot solve. So, similarly here in this case we have four unknowns, four knowns this is these are the knowns and these are unknowns. So, four knowns and there are six unknowns. So, from four we cannot determine six. Okay, we can get infinite number of solutions. So, then what to do? 
So, then we take make many observations such observation. So, we can have a series of observation say our satellite is there. So, every 4 second I am making one observation or every 1 second there is one observation. So, this observation then can be queued up and let us write this as row 1, row 1 dot azimuth 1 and elevation 1. Similarly, the next observation we make we write as row 2, row 2 dot az 2 and el 2 and this way we can have n number of observations. Now, using this n number of uh, observation it is a possible that we can estimate x y g and x dot y dot g dot as closely as possible, but it is a in uh, the, these things are obstructed by the errors in measurements. You know the angles are a troublesome quantity ok. If you are measuring angles from this place say the, this is your topocentric reference frame. and the satellite is located here this is x t p y t p and z t p and we measure angle here this is azimuth and this is elevation. So, th these quantities are not accurately measured ok. So, if you do little bit of error here and say your satellite is you are uh, looking for the satellite at moon ok like Chandrayaan 1 or Chandrayaan 2. So, in that case what happens? You will be creating a lot of error with the azimuth and elevation. If you use this and if because a small error in this it will create if you have a line if you have a shorter line say and you rotate by a small angle here say 1 degree. So, you will be creating this much of error. On the other hand if you rotate the same thing by 1 degree so you will be creating this much of error. So, you know that as the distance increases this will angles will create more trouble. So, in the actual estimation once we do the general orbit determination G O D orbit determination. So, at that time we do not account for the as the angles rather we work with the this range and the range rate. And you may have uh, multiple ground stations from where you are measuring the uh, this uh, doing these observations and then they can be merged together to find out the value of x y z x dot y dot g dot at different instant of time ok or maybe the initial point of time when we can write this as x 0 y 0 z 0 x dot y dot z 0 dot. So, our objective here is to look how this can be done that if these quantities are given here, here in this case we will take all these 4 quantities because if we do here for this earth satellite. So, in that case and that too for the preliminary orbit determination P A stands for preliminary. So, for preliminary orbit determination we can take this just at the instant the satellite is in injected into the orbit and after that you need to know the uh, in which uh, orbit the satellite is going ok. So, that can be calculated using if you know the Cartesian co coordinate correctly then only you will be able to evaluate this quantity a e i small omega capital omega theta. So, for that reason we do here for all of them and what I will be doing in a brief because again it is not possible to do all the in, in the great details. Okay, so, the statement for the orbit determination we can write like this. B 
given satellite observations namely range which we are indicating by rho range rate by rho dot azimuth and elevation over a number of time steps as recorded from one ground station multiple ground stations may be involved it's possible from one ground station starting from a specified Julian date point precise estimate obviously it will not be 100 percent accurate but as closely as possible find precise estimate of all the six core vital elements. So, the problem gets reduced to rho, rho dot azimuth and elevation is given. So, from there we need to find the semi major axis, eccentricity, the inclination, the nodal angle, argument of perigee and theta which is the true anomaly at that instant of time. And what are the assumptions that we need to make initial frame of reference is fixed at the center of earth with x axis along the vernal equinox. So, uh, this may be a simplifying assumption see uh, in the previous thing the precision uh, precision correction we have given then the nutation correction we have given and thereafter the rotation and then finally, the polar motion correction we have given. So, quite often if you are doing for a short period of time. So, this can be neglected nutation and precision the polar rotation also you can neglect only based on this rotation the main the spin the spinning of the earth you, you can work with. But uh, as we have decided uh, described that the inertial frame is f k 5 or either the uh, international celestial reference frame or it may be the e m e 2000. Okay. So, uh, we need to choose any one of them and with respect to this how your earth is currently oriented that you need to work out if you want to go in a precise way. If you do not want to go in a precise way, then just you need with respect to the vernal equinox, what is the uh, current uh, orientation of the earth that is all. So, in that we neglect the nutation and the precision correction and also the polar correction we can delete 
and simply we can keep the rotation part here. So, this is simplification. So, inertial reference frame which vernal equinox it is not mentioned here, but we know that what is the direction of the x. In the case of EME 2000, this is pointing toward the vernal equinox of J 2000. From there we are coming to the mean of date and then from there we are coming the true of date, then giving rotation and then giving the polar motion. But in this way, this is a simplified way of stating it. Simple inverse square gravitational field. That means you are uh, as you will uh, already I have covered the general perturbation theory, there are many infinite number of terms appears in the gravitation modeling. So, uh, especially due to the earth. So, those part we are just neglecting and writing here the f gravitation may be just written as g m m earth divided by r cube r. So, this is the simplest gravitational model to be used, because this does not complicate the whole problem okay and uh, still we understand what we are trying to do perturbation effects of evenly bodies are neglected so this is obvious from this point perturbation effects of evenly bodies are neglected Flattening of earth may be taken into account may or may not be taken into account, but see if, uh, here if you do not take flattening of the earth into account it, it, may, it will introduce a large error. So, flattening of earth may be taken into what is the altitude at which you are situated. Say this is the earth model you are seeing. So, this is the mean sea level and you may be sitting on somewhere on a, a hill. Okay. So, from and the top of the hill then you are observing. So, you have to do the correction for all those things you have to uh, without that it is not possible. Just taking the radius of the earth and then working. So, your measurement whatever you are doing and trying to estimate. So, your estimate will not be correct. It will introduce large amount of error. So, uh, precession, mutation and polar motion this may be included may not be included depending on your node. Polar motion this is not the same polar motion as the spin. or skipped. In actual process once the measurements are being done, so in the signal delay it is a diffraction and uh, the signal uh, once it is a passing through the atmosphere it may get reflected by many layers of the atmosphere somewhere it is a cold, uh, somewhere it is a hot. So, the uh, density of the atmosphere it is a varying. Okay. So, the that introduce uh, for that we have to introduce the corrections which we call as the propagation signal propagation delay delay and atmospheric correction 
atmospheric diffraction diffraction may be neglected if you want to account normally once the isro is working or nasa is working or other agencies which are working so they take into account all these things so data is measured in the computer all these corrections are given okay. and after that the uh, what we get it's not purely raw data but it is having measurement errors it's errors are still present so if i say that what does it mean by measurement error if i say that say y equal to gx this is the relation between the observed value this is the observed value and this is the actual value or relation between uh, this is not observed value and this is the observed value just like this is a cartesian coordinate the coordinates are there we can write it and here this is the rho rho dot azimuth elevations as such so once you are observing this so naturally there goes with this the error this is called the measurement error and the estimation orbit determination it involves estimation theory okay filtering theory the okay, least square estimation the kalman filter there are so, so many varieties available so those are used for estimating this x from this y in the presence of this noise and this noise is assumed to be the gaussian noise gaussian noise okay because its a distribution will be gaussian and some more assumption can be made but here uh, those things become very important once you go into the filtering area like the kalman filter and other things so we have more assumption in that involved but we are not going to tackle all those things uh, i will i am trying to show you the concept behind this to actually implement you need more rigorous uh, work on this and a more rigorous lecture also so the ultimately the objective then becomes and if i put here a tilde means uh, these are vectors okay so y tilde here in this case this consist of rho rho dot azimuth and elevation this is one observation okay and x tilde this consist of x dot y dot z dot and x y z which will write in form of or rather uh, dot we will put below okay so dot we will keep it here and we can write this in terms of x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and x6 similarly this can be written here as y1 y2 y3 and y4 so this becomes easy to handle okay so in the estimation least square estimation what is the objective that you reduce this error is the error function it's a defined like this this implies this is nothing but uh, mu1 square mu2 square mu3 square plus mu4 square and this quantity can be written as y tilde minus gx tilde transpose times y tilde minus gx tilde so objective is to minimize this error so if you minimize this error then using this observed values this unknowns x can be estimated so this is the whole uh, orbit determination process involved in nutshell okay and i need to elaborate already i have taken the uh, conversion from the inertial frame to the uh, terrestrial frame okay. we have done the uh, conversion from the fk5 to we have a pseudo earth fixed 
P e f we have written we have converted from f k 5 to the P e f okay. and uh, this is one of the method and I told you that uh, this is the f k 5 reduction we can uh, go for the other reduction uh, you have the in the ITRS or either the non rotating origin concept, but uh, obviously if, uh, that requires the discussing all these things it requires at least 20 30 lectures to uh, cover in details. So, we are not working with uh, all those things here and simply we will look into the basic concepts what we are what is all about the orbit determination. So, the state model that means what we will do that the we assume that we have the initial Cartesian coordinates available x 0, y 0, z 0, x dot 0, y dot 0 and z dot 0. So, this is assumed value, this is not correct value. So, in one dimension I can show it like this uh, that If I show here the row row dot azimuth elevation something like this and say only I show here y. Okay. So, this may be the exact value of y and uh, your measured value may be somewhere here. This may be your measured value. So, therefore, this is the amount of error it is already introduced in the measurement. Moreover, so this constitutes your delta y okay, error in measurement and here this is the corresponding to this x 0 and this I will do in blue this is accurate x 0 unknown. accurate x let us say this is x 0. So, corresponding to this this is the exact value of the x 0, but this is again not known to me I may be assuming it to be somewhere along this line say um, I differ from this point and I come to uh, either on the left hand side uh, either I go on the right hand side. So, these are the wrongly measured uh, assumed value. So, this is the assumed is 0 not correct and uh, these are generally uh, available from the inertial navigation system system on board the satellite. and that gives you a wrong value. So, if it is giving a wrong value, so using that wrong value then you have to get to the correct value, you have to estimate this and once you estimate this correct value then you will be able to determine the orbit. Okay. So, the first we have to assume the for this purpose we have to assume the state model. So, state model is our basic as per assumption this is minus mu by r q bar. And then this can be written as x double dot in the scalar form mu by r q x y double dot is equal to minus mu by r q y and this we need to put here in the status space format. So, let us assume that x tilde we represent as x y z x dot y dot z dot and this we write as x 1 y 1 z 1 or sorry this is x 1 x 2 and x 2 x 3 and x 4 x 5 x 6. 
this is the notation we use those who have done already the controls course so they may be aware of this transformation so this implies x tilde dot equal to x dot y dot z dot and x double dot y double dot z double dot x 5 dot and x 6 dot. So, x 1 dot from here is what we will observe x 1 dot is nothing but x dot and if you look here in this place this is x 4. So, this we write as x 4. Similarly, x 2 dot is y dot. So, y dot is here x 5. So, it goes as x 5 here in this place and x 3 dot is z dot. So, z dot is here x 6. So, this goes as s 6 and thereafter we have x 4 dot which is x double dot. So, x double dot is available to me from this place. So, I will write this as minus mu by r cube and x then becomes from this place x 1. So, this is x 1. Similarly, uh, y dot uh, x dot 5 is nothing but your y double dot and y double dot from this place is minus mu by r cube okay. y and then y the quantity which is present here. So, this y is directly related to x 2 this x is related to this point and this is related to x 1. So, only y is related is given here this which is nothing but x 2. So, this we re replace as x 2 and the last one similarly the z will be x 3. In short notation we can write this x tilde dot equal to f x tilde because why because it is a function of x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5 and x 6 where x tilde is nothing but the quantity we have shown here in this place x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6. And r is given by x square plus y square plus z square on the root. So, with uh, this uh, I conclude today and uh, in the next lecture we will continue with this. So, this is the state model which is available to us and we will try to put it in a proper format and uh, let us see how the things evolve and uh, uh, the process of orbit determination. Other things you can refer to the Howard Curtis book on uh, the space dynamics for engineers. They are the uh, theoretical methods of doing the orbit determination. There are many other great books written uh, which discusses completely the how the theoretical way of do, uh, theoretically it is done, but whatever we are doing here it is uh, the computational method and this is the method applied in reality in the orbit determination problem. If you have to find this orbit of the satellite, so this is the method that will go. Okay, so, thank you very much.